Ah, uh, 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 don't touch that dial. Randy's Old Time Radio Show presents... The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Welcome to the world of mystery, to the world of terrifying imagination. The story you are about to hear is called Lost Dog. Yes, a dog story. But please don't expect a charming family tale about man's best friend. In fact, you may even decide that the dog in this story is man's worst enemy. It all depends on whether or not you share the particular terror of our heroine, Miss Julia Smollett. Get out! Get out of here, please! Please, George, take him away! Come here, George, for Pete's sakes. Is not going to hurt you? Get it out! George! Please! Our mystery drama, Lost Dog was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Kim Hunter. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll return shortly with Act One. I'm Cliff Robertson, and I made a picture not long ago called Charlie, where I played the part of a man who was mentally retarded. I'd like to tell you a little of what I learned. Thousands and thousands of mentally retarded children are born each year. It can happen to any family, rich or poor. It makes no difference. Except some children are luckier than others. Some kids can be just a little slow in learning. But some will never learn much of anything at all. But every one of them can be helped, and that perhaps is the most important thing that I found out. These kids have a right to a chance to learn as much about how to live a normal life as they can. The National Association for Retarded Children and its nearly 1,500 local associations are helping to give them that chance. Will you help, too, by supporting the work of your local association for retarded children? Thank you. For children growing up in homes without books, there's a special emptiness. A deep-down hunger for the world beyond the street corner or playground. A world where they could grow up to become whatever they want to be. The millions of these children will never find out about that world because they'll never know what they can learn in books unless you help. Riff, reading is fundamental. He is helping to get millions of books into the hands of these boys and girls. Books they can choose themselves for keeps. And once a child gets into books, there's no stopping him. More than 150 local RIF programs are proving it in communities like yours. Won't you help RIF help the children in your community? Write to RIF Incorporated. That's RIF, care of Smithsonian Institution, Washington, D.C., 20560. begins in the quiet parlor of a small suburban house at the end of Elm Street. Well, uh, not completely quiet, since young Ronnie Hughes is once again practicing his scales under the gentle, watchful eyes of his piano teacher, Mrs. Julia Smollett. Well, that was very good, Ronnie. That was much better than last time. I still wish we could skip this scale stuff, Mrs. Smollett. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm ready to play concertos yet, but just the same... Why does it bother you so much, Ronnie? Well, playing scales makes me feel like a little kid, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's silly. All the finest pianists had to learn their scales before they could play any compositions. Uh, I guess it's my fault for starting to learn to play so late in life. I... Ronnie, 19 years old isn't very late in life. 
I'm 20, Mrs. Smollett. Are you? Already? Oh, now, that don't tell me you've been coming here a full year. No, just about four months. But my birthday was last week. It was on Thursday. You weren't well last Thursday. Oh, uh, yes, that's right. You, you still don't look well. Um, listen, why don't we see how well you know the chromatics? Your cheek, it's swollen. It's still swollen. Does it hurt? Uh, no, 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 it doesn't hurt at all. It was, it was silly of me to stumble and fall that way. I know that your husband hit you, Mrs. Smollett. Now, that's a very silly thing to say. You can't tell me it isn't the truth. I remember the first time he did it. At least the first time I knew anything about it. Now, I'm going to have to put a stop to this. Yes. I wish you would. I wish you'd call the police or something the next time it happens. Now, listen to me, young man. You've been listening to a lot of foolish town gossip. Then tell me it isn't true. What I'm telling you is that it isn't any of your business. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess that's right. It's none of my business. I, I should never open my big mouth. I'll, I'll just keep it shut from now on. Ronnie. Yeah? All right. All right, my husband and I had a quarrel. He was drunk, wasn't he? George is in a very difficult occupation. The competition is very keen, and, well, the people he has to deal with aren't always very gentle. I don't know anything about the trucking business, Mrs. Smollett. I just hate the idea of anybody hurting you. That's all. I, I just can't understand why he'd do such a thing. What did you do to him? <laughs> well, if you must know, Ronnie, I, I won't allow him to have a dog. What? <laughs> it sounds silly, doesn't it? And you're right, it is. It's silly on my part. But I, I'm absolutely terrified of dogs. And unfortunately, my husband wants one. He wants one very much. And that's why he hit you? Well, the argument goes back a very long ways. Almost almost since George and I were married seven years ago. Well, it, it wasn't much of a problem when we lived in the city. George didn't have his trucking company then. He was just a driver. But when he got the chance to buy into a firm out here, well, we bought this house. And I guess having a house in the country made George think about dogs and things. But I just don't see what's so important about it. Well, some things become important in marriage. Oh, now, just look what all this talk has done to the time. It's after 6.30. My husband's going to be home in half an hour, and I haven't even started dinner. Will he beat you for that, too? Ronnie, if you keep talking this way, well... I just don't think it would be wise to continue giving you lessons. You, you, you don't mean that. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday, Ronnie. Yeah. Sure. Bye, Mrs. Smollett. Goodbye, Ronnie. And happy birthday, Ronnie. What else could I tell the guy? I had two semis in a repair shop. If I wanted the job, I had to use his equipment. Well, fine. Only nobody was going to hook me for a 500 buck premium. Hey, are you listening, Julia? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm listening, George. What's the matter with you tonight? I'm a little tired, I suppose. Tired? You? From what? Lifting the piano cover? Yeah, you make me sick, you know that? You weren't listening to a word I said. You don't care about what happens in my business. You never cared. But I never understood much about it. You always talk to me as if I'm one of your associates. I know what's eating on you. Think I don't know? You're sitting there like the last judgment. You're sitting there blaming me for taking that swipe at you last week. No, you're wrong. Look at yourself. You didn't even bother putting makeup on that cheek of yours. Makeup wouldn't cover the swelling. Yeah. You want to remind me how much you suffer? Well, I got a hot flash for you, kid. The one who suffers around this house is me. I could enjoy this house plenty. I could have a great time if you weren't so sick in the head. 
Uh, you're talking about the dog again. Why not? You think I forgot? But surely it can't mean that much to you. I've had dogs ever since I was six years old. You never talked about it when we were living in the city. It was different. Who put a dog in that air-conditioned chicken coop? But now we've got a house. A real honest-to-God house, Julia. A house needs a dog. Oh, George. You know I feel terrible about saying no, but I can't help myself. It's just something in me. It's a phobia, I guess, but dogs terrify me. Even small dogs, tiny, harmless little dogs. I, I, I go to pieces when one comes near me. It's all in your mind. Yes, but isn't that enough? No, not for me it isn't. Can't you understand that it, it's like a sickness, like a disease? Okay, so if it's like a disease, how come you never got cured? How come you never saw a doctor about it? A doctor? Yeah, that's right. You're telling me you're sick? We'll just find out. Well, where, where are you going? I'm going to get you an appointment, a doctor's appointment. I'm calling Dr. McCann right now. At this hour? I'll call him at home and make an appointment for tomorrow. We're going to settle this thing once and for all. Well, Julia, maybe, maybe I'm the wrong kind of doctor. What do you mean? Well... If you're serious about getting rid of this phobia, that would take a specialist. You mean a, a psychiatrist? Oh, some kind of head doctor. I'm sure you realize that people who are afraid of certain things, well, they've usually had something happen to them in their childhoods, some traumatic experience or other that gets stuck in their mind like a burr and won't come out. Doctor... You know, we couldn't possibly afford going through analysis. George's company isn't doing that well. He'd never stand for paying all that money week after week. Well, maybe you don't need all that couch stuff. Maybe there's something else you might try. Like what? You ever hear of hypnotherapy? You mean getting hypnotized by someone? Not just by someone. I mean someone who can put you under and maybe help cure you of this thing. I'm not saying it always works, but it does sometimes. Mm. I, I don't know. The thought sort of frightens me. Nothing frightening about it. It might be just the way to find out why you're really afraid of dogs. <laughs> What'd you do? Forget your key? Yes, George. I'm sorry. Why are you burnt so late? It's almost a quarter after seven. I I went to a movie after I saw Dr. McCann. I, I was I was just so nervous. I, I had to get out of myself. So I, I went to this movie, and it lasted longer than I thought it would. Oh, that's great. Just great. Now what happens to my dinner, huh? Dinner's all ready. All I have to do is heat it. That's a fine thing. I come home early to surprise you. You're not even here. I'm sorry, George. Look, do, do you think you should have more to drink now? I, I mean, it won't take me more than ten minutes to get dinner on the table. Never mind how much I drink. Besides, I'm in no hurry for dinner. I want to know what the doctor said. Oh, well, it's just as I told you, George. There's nothing Dr. McCann can do for me. It's not something that can be cured with a pill. There's got to be some way. Well, he suggested that maybe a different kind of doctor, a, a hypnotherapist. A, a what? Someone who hypnotizes you, who tries to make you go back into your past. It sounds like a lot of junk to me. Well, it might do some good. I, I really don't know. I'll tell you what would do some good. A little direct action. That's what you need. What are you talking about, George? The only way to learn how to swim is to jump in the water, right? Well, that's what you need, Julia. I simply can't make you understand, can well, I? Well, maybe I can make you understand. That, that, forget it. You want to get that dinner ready? 
I'm hungry. Yes, yes, I'm going now. Uh, look, uh, why don't you change first? Change? Yeah, yeah, your clothes. Get more comfortable. Well, yes, I think I'd like to do that, George. I, I won't be long. That's my surprise. That's a tower. Get him out of here. Please. Please, George, take him away. It's only a dog for pitch sake. He's not going to hurt you. Get him out. George, please. It only goes to prove that there are more terrors in this world of ours than anyone imagines. But the question in the Smollett house is, which one is the real terror? Attila the dog? Or George, the husband. We'll learn more about both of them when we return shortly with Act Two. Hi, son. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Junior. Kellogg's Special K presents Junior Gives Up. Junior, why aren't you eating your Special K? It's your favorite cereal. Oh, just because. Just because why, honey? Just because Carla said some evil things about it. That's just because why. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Darla. Hi, sis. Hi, Junior. Darla, what did you tell Junior about his Special K? Daddy, all I told him was that Special K is good for him. Yeah, and anything that's good for me never seems to taste good. But Junior, you already know that Special K tastes good. Oh, do I believe. Darla, or my taste buds. What's that, son? Oh, nothing, Dad. Son, Special K is a America's favorite high-protein cereal. It's got minerals, vitamins, iron, and all those good, nutritious things. But it's got to be so popular over the years because it tastes good, too. You mean it's good for me and tastes good, too. Right, son. Right, Dad. Right, Junior. Right, right, Dad. <laughs> right indeed. Start your balanced breakfast with Kellogg's Special K. It's nutritious and delicious. Right. Last chance to see the boyfriend, the rollicking, fun-filled show now playing at the Waldo Astoria at Inner Playhouse. This week is absolutely your last chance to see the boyfriend because they can't hold it over. And this show has drawn the highest praise from critics, and the audiences have loved every fun-filled minute of it. You will, too. There are plenty of good seats now available, so if you're in the mood to forget all the current problems in favor of a simpler time, come see the boyfriend. Call Waldo Astoria at 756-1212 for reservations. Plenty of free off-street parking is available. I guess you can hear the music in the background. It's now a quarter to eight. You hear the piano player playing, and we're down the floor of the Waldo Astoria, and I'm going to talk to some people. What's your name? Mary Cassidy. Mary Cassidy? Where are you sitting? How was your meal this evening? Wonderful. Did you like it? Really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. Well, thank I you, Mary. I remember Mary. this show. I used to come to the show in 1936. Is that right, Bill? I can't believe that this is a... Waldo Show. Now playing at Waldo Astoria, The Boyfriend. Call 756-1212. Now let's return to the plight of Mrs. Julia Smollett, the woman whose nightmares take the shape of a barking dog. How long do you want me to board the animal, Mr. Smart? I don't know. Until that wife of mine gets her head on straight, I guess. Uh, beg your pardon? My wife doesn't like dogs. Took one look at a tiller and screamed the house down. Well, some women get scared of Dobermans. This dog's only six months old, for Pete's sakes. Practically a puppy. Can you board my dog until my wife gets through with her treatment? Treatment? I... Don't think I understand. Just give me a straight answer. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, certainly. Uh, we'll take the dog for as long as you like. We'll see how long that is. Uh, please sit down, Mrs. Smollett. Oh, thank you. Uh, right here, Mr. Smollett? Uh, yeah, thanks. You both seem a little nervous. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Dr. Froelich, but I... I suppose I am. <laughs> I know. Uh, Dr. McKinnon explained to me. He said that hypnotherapy was was an accepted kind of treatment. For some cases, yes. Not all of them. All I want to know is, will it work? Well, frankly, I don't know much about your wife or her problem. I'm not going to say I can help her get over this particular phobia until I do. Please, George, uh, let me tell the doctor about it. I can tell him in one sentence. My wife's afraid of dogs, all dogs, big ones, little ones. Falls apart when she just looks at one. No, that isn't true. I, I don't fall apart, as my husband said, unless... 
unless I'm close to them. Animal phobias are one of the most common types I deal with, Mrs. Smollett. And I might say that I have a great deal of success with them. But, but how do you do it? I use a technique called hyperamnesia. Amnesia? Actually, it's the opposite of amnesia. After placing the subject in a trance state and making her completely willing to free herself from critical judgments about her past... Wait, 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 wait a minute. I, I, I'm not following you. What we do is get the subject to remember long-forgotten, very, very deeply repressed experiences. Sometimes they remember them in great detail, even though they still maintain amnesia at the conscious level. And you see? Mm, I'm not sure I do. Do you mean you can find something in my mind that, that I don't even know is there? Possibly. It may take some time. We might need several visits to establish a rapport between us. But if all goes well, we should soon be able to find out if anything in your past is causing this problem. And, of course, that something will most likely concern a dog. That wasn't one of Hank's longest passes, but it was a bullet right at Joe Flax, deep in enemy territory. Joe? Three minutes left in the house. Are you home already? Whether or not the race is trying to go all the way. Well, what happened? How'd it go at Felix? It was all very strange. Well, come on, let's hear it. Did he get you hypnotized or didn't he? Um, look, I just want to hang my coat up. Look, I'm missing a big game just because I want to hear. You might as well turn it on again, George, because all that Dr. Froehlich did was what he called the first stages. What does that mean? I mean, well, he put me under all right. There wasn't any problem about that. Yeah, I figured that. Tell me what he said about the dog. He didn't say anything, George. Well, what do you mean? Just that. He didn't start talking about my problem. That's going to have to wait until I'm more receptive. What's he trying to do? Keep stringing you along until he bleeds me dry? Those visits cost 50 bucks each, you know that? I know it's expensive, but you're the one who insisted that I go. 50 bucks a week plus kennel charges. A couple of months of that and I'll be hocking half of my trucks. Look. You tell that guy to get down to business. It's only my second visit, George. Well, we better start seeing some results on number three, understand? I'm not waiting any longer. There doesn't have to be a number three. As far as I'm concerned, we can stop right now. What are you talking about? George, I don't want to do this thing. I, I hate being put under. I hate anybody poking around in my subconscious for... For something that, that, that isn't even important to me. You mean you want to be sick? I think I'll lie down for a while. Don't you walk out on me. I'm sure you'd rather watch a football game. Oh, tell me what to do. I know. You think I'm Mr. Lowbrow. But let me tell you something, kid. You're no fairy princess anymore. Maybe that's what you used to think you were back in the old days. But the only fairy around this house is that piano student of yours. I don't like to talk to you when you're like this. That's what you always say when I'm drinking. Well, I'm not drinking now. And you better listen to what I'm saying. Oh, please, George, don't touch me. Yeah, I knew that was coming next. Don't touch. That's your favorite phrase, night and day. Don't touch, George. You're hurting me. That's the only thing you understand. The only touch that means a thing to you. So of me. Stop being such an, an animal. I'll show you what animals do. No, George, please, don't. Don't. I'll show you what kind of an animal I am. I'll don't, show you. Don't, George. Please don't. Please. You know, I guess that wasn't much better, was it? Um, what? You didn't think much of the performance. I, I mean, it wasn't exactly Horowitz, was it? Uh... No, I, it was perfectly all right, Ronnie, really. But you're not all right, are you? Oh, yes, I'm fine. You look awful. No, I, I didn't mean that. You never look awful. But 
You're acting so funny today. I'm sorry. I, I guess I have something on my mind. Can I take a guess? No. What you can take is the next page of this lesson. Listen. This is small. Look. Can I call you Julia? Oh, really, Ronnie? I know. I know. You're going to give me all that stuff about teacher-student relationship. Only I'm sick of calling you Mrs. Smollett. I, I hate it. I hate it because it's his name. Ronnie. No. You're the most important thing in my whole life. Please, Ronnie. I don't want you to say things like that. They're not true, and they're just making it impossible for me to teach you. You know how I feel about you. I'm sure you do. You're just too smart not to have seen it. I know that you're 20 years old. Is that why you don't want me to talk about it? Because I'm younger than you are? Well, it's flattering that you feel that way, Ronnie, but I know it's just a little crush you have. Boys go through that sort of thing all the time. Boys? Crush? Look, you're treating me like a kid. If you ask me, that's why you keep me on those damn scale exercises all the time, so you won't have to think that I'm any more of a man than those ten-year-old kids that you teach all the time. Uh, no, Ronnie. I know you're a man. Of course I do. Well, well if you think that, uh, treat me like one. Just once, uh, please. Please. Let me kiss you, Julia. Just once. Uh, Ronnie. Please, Julia. Uh, what is it? What, what's the matter? What? Uh, it's, it's nothing. It, it, I, I just bruised my neck a little, and, and when you touched it... it neck? It, yes, it, it's nothing. Is that why you're wearing a scarf today? Let me see. No, Ronnie, don't. Oh, my God. It was an... It was just an accident. Nothing but an accident. You're all bruised. You're all neck. Look at it. I can see more bruises. Down the shoulder. What did he do to you? No, please, please don't talk about it. I can't bear to talk about it. You don't have to. Julia, you don't have to. But he's going to talk about it. With me. Does it not bring back memories? Hi, Julia. What? That song. We used to dance to it, remember? In the go room, first year we were married. Hey, you want a drink? No, thanks. I'm drinking enough for both of us. Ah, it makes me feel good. Yes, yes, I know. That's the thing about wives. They ought to do what their husbands do. A man needs a pal, not just a wife. I'm sorry that I'm not a pal, George. That's why I need a dog, you understand? A man's got to have a friend. Somebody who understands him, you see? You really think that dog, what's his name, would understand you? His name's Atella. Atella. That's an awful name for a dog. A frightening name. Everything scares you, even names. Oh, who the heck is that? I don't know. Hello, Mr. Smollett. Hey, what is this? Since when do you give piano lessons at night, Julia? Ronnie, what are you doing here? I didn't come for a lesson. I came to... to talk to Mr. Smollett. You want to talk to me? About what? May I please come in, sir? Yeah, yeah, sure. Come on, sonny. Ronnie, you shouldn't have come here. I won't stay long. I just want to say something. To your husband. Sure, kid. Go ahead. I wanted to say that I know what you're doing to Julia. I know how you've been hurting her. 
and I won't let you get away with it. What was that? Bonnie, no. Oh, look, even if she doesn't want to say anything about it, I will. You touch her again, I'll go to the police. I mean that. See, there are laws in this country. I think maybe I'm hearing things. Swear, Mr. Smollett, you ever hear me once more? You're going to go to jail. So I'm going to jail, huh? And you're going to put me there. Riley, I begged you not to do this. No, 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 no. It's okay, Julie. I like hearing this. I mean, I want to know what the younger generation is thinking. You don't want me to hit my wife anymore, you see? That's it. You sure you know the difference between hitting and just giving little love taps? Please, Ronnie, go. Go right now. I mean, maybe you made a mistake, kid. For instance, this is a love tap. Oh, George! Now, that's a love tap, Ronnie, baby. This is... Oh! George, stop it! No! Hey, you see the difference, kid? You better be sure you know the difference before you talk to the cop. George! Sad to realize that all men who love dogs aren't necessarily lovable themselves. But obviously, George Smollett is a man who believes that brute force trains people as well as animals. He may be right in some respects, but perhaps he should be aware of the old saying that every dog has his day. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. I'm Hi Brown, producer of Radio Mystery Theater. And as you may imagine, I'm excited about this new adventure in modern radio. This new statement of radio's marvelous power to stir the imagination. Now, we're wondering about your reaction, about who you are and how you like what we're doing. So to encourage you to get in touch with us, we're holding a drawing for three weeks. Fifty prizes a week, two AM FM stereo phonos, two travel clock radios, and 46 anthologies of modern suspense. Just mail us your name and address, and you're eligible. Of course, we'd like knowing whether your glad radio drama is back, but name and address will do it. To Mystery Theater, Box 50, Radio City Station, New York, 119. That's Box 50, Radio City Station, New York, 119. Or for good everywhere, unless locally prohibited. You know, you, you hack it through life, and you struggle to get a lot of things. But the one thing you really want is for someone to say, hey, you did a good job, or to really care how you feel. People will look up to you. Ain't it funny? Those little things. And so you fake it a lot, and you pretend you're a winner. You pretend you're something special, and and that you're worth loving. But it don't work. And that everyday kind of love, it, it didn't happen. So I, I just got tired of thinking it. Trying to be somebody else. And I, I can remember saying, look, I'm sorry, but I don't know everything. I can't do everything. And I, I make mistakes. And you know what? That's when they started to say they love me. Ain't that funny? Funny faces, guys. Who's love? An important day has arrived in the life of Julia Smollett and her husband, George, because Julia is on her way to the offices of Dr. Fulick, who has promised that this is the day which may bring her back to the forgotten days of her past. Perhaps to the very day when she greeted the word terror with the friendly eyes and wagging tail of man's best friend. Ah, this better be the payoff. That's all I've got to say. I hope you're not disappointed, George. Well, at least you're talking to me. That's the first word you've said to me in two days. I haven't had much to say. Look, the kid Ronnie's all right. I didn't mark him up. He's still as pretty as ever. That worries you, doesn't it? Nobody's got a right to walk into my own house and say those things to me. You have nothing to worry about, George. Yeah, that's what you say. 
50 bucks a visit is something to worry me, and 40 a week for the dog, and a lot of other things. We've also lost a piano pupil. I suppose you realize that. Uh, who cares about that? Ronnie paid $20 a week for his lessons, George. I won't miss it. Not as much as you'll miss your little Prince Charming. Well, what about it? About what? You're going to miss him, right? You're not going to have any shoulder to cry on, are you? I think I'd better explain exactly what I planned, Mrs. Smollett. Uh, we're going to try something called age regression. Age regression? It sounds as if you're going to make me younger. <laughs> That's almost exactly what we'll try to do. Well, if you can, Doctor, you have every woman in America on your doorstep. All I'm going to do is attempt to take your mind back into your own past. I'm going to see if you can relive some of your early years. You mean that I, I might actually remember things from, from my early childhood? I'm hoping that you'll recall one particular thing. The thing that you've been concealing from your adult self for a very long time. It's, uh, it's rather frightening, isn't it? No. No, you mustn't fear knowledge, especially self-knowledge. Now, uh, we'll just draw the window shade and we'll get started. Would you like to come inside? Me? You mean you're all through so fast? No, no, no. We're not through. But your wife is in a deep trance, and I thought you might want to be here when we begin the age regression attempt. Well, sure, if you want me in there. Hey, she looks like she's asleep. But she isn't. Hypnosis only resembles the sleep state, but it's not. Mrs. Smollett is very much awake. Yeah? Mrs. Smollett... Julia, you may open your eyes now. Ah, that's fine. Now, tell me, do you know what day it is today? Uh, yes, Wednesday. No, you're wrong. It's Friday, Julia. Is that right? Yes, Friday. No, Julia, it isn't Friday either. Do you know what day it is now? No. I don't know what day it is. In fact, right now you don't know the day or the month or even the year, Julia, do you? No. You see, Mr. Smollett, I'm purposely doing this to dislocate your wife in time. Well, yeah, 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 I understand. Julia, you're going to be a child all over again. You're going to see and hear and feel everything you did since you were a baby. And you're going to tell me everything I want to know about what you see, hear, and feel. You're going to answer all my questions starting right now. You understand? Yes. Julia, you are one year old. Do you hear me? You're an infant. Only one year old. Tell me what you know, Julia. Tell me if you're afraid of dogs. Oh, my God. You sound like a happy baby to me, Julia. I don't think you had any fear of animals when you were a little baby. Did you? Now you're two years old, Julia. You can probably say a few words now. Are you afraid of dogs? No. No. And now you're three, Julia. You're growing up very quickly. Now you're a big three-year-old girl. And are you afraid of dogs now, Julia? No. No. I'm not afraid of Bow Wow. You're four years old now, Julia. Tell me if you're afraid of dogs now. <laughs> it's all right to shake your head as long as you tell me, Julia. Now you're five. 
five years old. What? Still not afraid of dogs? No. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Now you're six, Julia. Six. This can't go on forever. Please, Mr. Smollett. Not afraid at six, Julia? Then let's be seven years old. You're seven years old. Still not afraid, are you? Now, what about eight? You're an eight-year-old girl now. Copper. Copper. What was that? Copper. Poor Topper. What's she saying? Julia, who is Topper? Is Topper a dog? Yes. Topper's my dog. Where is Topper now, Julia? Topper's dead. They put Topper away. Then they killed him, and it's all my fault. It's all my fault. What's your fault? What did you do, Julia? No. It's his fault. It's Bobby's fault. Who's he, Julia? Is Bobby a friend of yours? I hate him. He teases me. He teases me all the time. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad. Only, only don't kill Topper, please. Please don't kill my dog. Does all this mean something? Yes, it means a great deal, Mr. Smollett. And uh, Julia, now please listen. I, I want you to tell me all about Bobby and Topper. Bobby lives next door. He's ten. He teases me. He pulls my hair. He, he tore my dress. He put mud in my shoes. And he hit, hit Topper with a rock. Mommy! Mommy! What happened, Julia? Why are you calling your mother? What's happened to Bobby? He, he, he's killed him! He, he's killed him! Who? I warned him. I told him what I would do. I told him. Was it Bobby you warned? Sick him. Sick him, Topper. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Oh, my God. Quiet. Hey, Julia, listen to me. I want you to explain everything to me very clearly. Did you tell your dog to hurt Bobby? Yes. Did he hurt Bobby? Did Topper kill him? No. No, he hurt Bobby. He, he didn't kill him. He hurt Bobby in the neck, but they killed Topper. They killed my dog. And it's my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> well, I think we found the lost dog. <laughs> So, now you know, Mrs. Smollett. Now you may be able to understand. It was this one incident in your childhood, this one tragedy of your past innocence, which is responsible for your phobia. <laughs> More than anything, you have a strong feeling of guilt. You blame yourself for what happened to little Bobby, when in all likelihood you were not in any way at fault. No, Dr. Froelich. You're wrong about that part. It was my fault. I remember it all now. You probably just wished that Topper would turn on the little boy, and you saw your wish become a reality. So you accused yourself of a crime. I didn't wish it. I told Topper what to do. I hated Bobby so much, I wanted him to sink his teeth in that little boy's throat. Well... At least you brought it all into the light, Mrs. Smollett. And something tells me that it won't be long before you willingly accept the love and friendship of the dog again. Oh, hello, Ronnie. How are you? I'm okay, I guess. That looks like a brand new car you're driving. Well, yeah, it is. My parents gave it to me for my birthday, but, well, it took a couple of months to get it here from the factory. We see, I mean, I wanted a couple of special things done to it. It's very handsome, Ronnie. I'm sure you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, 
I guess you've been shopping, huh? Uh, yes, I have been. Uh, Ronnie, maybe you'd like to come inside for a few minutes for some tea or something? I, uh, I'm afraid I can't right now. I mean, see, I'm supposed to pick up Lisa at her house. Lisa? Yeah, Lisa Bryant. We, uh, sort of gone steady now. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, of course. Well, um, it was very nice running into you, Ronnie. Yes, it was. Uh, hey, by the way, you're looking... Well, I mean, you seem real fine these days, Mrs. Smollett. Yes, Ronnie. I'm really very fine. Now, I've got to go inside. It's time to feed Attila. Who? Goodbye, Ronnie. Where's that animal? Oh, well, I suppose he's playing in the yard or something. Oh, well, maybe he's in the bedroom. Attila! No, not in there. Oh, I see George's jacket's back from the cleaners. I hope they haven't taken all the smell out of it. <laughs> no, they couldn't do that. Nothing will ever take the smell of George out of anything. Now to find that animal. Attila! Where are you? Attila? Are you here? Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, for heaven's sake. Are you still tied up in this poor thing? Oh, well, don't worry. I'll have you out of that in a minute. We can't have you tied up, can we, boy? We can't play our little game if you're tied up. Yes, yes, that's a good dog. Good, good boy, Attila. Now, 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 let's play our little game. See the jacket, Attila? See? Smell the jacket, boy. Go on, smell it. That's a good boy. Good boy. Now, sick him, Attila. That's it. That's it. said a dog has to be man's best friend. Why not woman's best friend? Especially a woman like Julia who's just learning how really helpful a dog can be. Or rather, she's remembering how helpful. And one day soon, George Smollett will come home to a very surprising greeting from his own pet. I'll be back shortly. When you say pet, you've said a lot of things nobody else can say. When you say pet, you've got as far as you can go to get the very best. Why do some people think Bud is sort of special? Go ahead and find out why. Brewing beer right does make a difference. Oh. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. We hope we haven't given you the impression that we don't love dogs. We love them very much, especially since dogs are descended from wolves. And the wolf is not only a fascinating creature... He also does something wonderful for all lovers of mystery stories. He makes this chilling sound. <laughs> Our cast included Kim Hunter, George Matthews, Robert Dryden, Gil Mack, and Mandy Patinkin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. 
he'll never be satisfied. But we got him out of the country. What's to keep him from coming back when he's broke or even threatening us from abroad? I gave him $1,000 in cash only a few days ago. When he was picked up in the bar, he had only about 270 some dollars left. In a matter of two days, he'd squandered over 700 But if he were made to understand that the sum agreed on was all he was going to get. Can I make you understand? We're not dealing with a rational, honest man. What can you do? There are only two things one can do about a black man. I keep on paying and paying forever. And the other? And the other? Kill him. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.